Hey there, thank you for watching this clip on how to find a graphs and a function's symmetry. Let's get started. The best way to describe the relationship between a function and a graph, let's start with the graph. Everybody can relate to graph. I have different graphs that could uh, be symmetrical along x-axis. That's just a fancy way to say if you have this graph, if you fold along x-axis, the graph would land on top of each other. Of course, we could all, always have a graph that's symmetrical along y-axis. Once again, if I fold along y-axis, this part of graph would land on top of the other half. I can also have a graph that if you rotate 180 degrees against the origin, now picture this grabbing this half rotate 180, you end up on this half of the graph. Okay, Those graphs all have very good symmetries. You know, this one is against x-axis, y-axis, and origin. Okay, However, not all three types of the graph are function. Function have a very distinct requirement. So I'm drawing a big box here for a function. And let's just put a word function here. And this is my graph. A function has a specific requirement in that x are depend variable or independent variable. When you pick an x, it cannot have two y values. So think of it as a sports team. If this is Joey, Joey cannot play for two sports team that's opposing each other. However, Joey can play for a team, and why is the team? Zach can also play for the same team. This one is a function, and so is this one. If there's Joey is playing for one team, Zach is for playing for another team, that's okay also for a function. This one, however, not a function because Joey is playing for two opposing teams. Okay, so that's the difference between graph and a function. Function is a very specific type of graph. Of course, there are graphs that no one really bothered to write a function, stock market, for example. Okay. If you can predict what a function is, you'd be a millionaire. Of course, this is too difficult. And then there are a whole bunch of stuff like function that no one really bothers to go find out what the graph is. Okay, so there's a lot of property here. No one really bothered to find out what the graph is. So a graph doesn't have to be a function, and likewise, a function doesn't have to be a graph. But when a graph is a function and it has symmetry, it becomes very interesting. And those are the type functions and graphs that we want to take a look at for this clip. It turned out those two type of graph, one, that's symmetrical against the y-axis. Take example over here. This is a function. It's against. It's symmetrical against the y-axis. Like I said before, if you fold right over it, this point lands right on top of its mirror component, uh, a mirror partner almost. This one we call it an even function. Okay. In a word, in a little while, I'll say why it's called an even function. And the other type of function that we're interested in exploring in this clip is, um, you guessed it, odd function. As we rotate, grabbing hold of this point, rotate 180 degrees, we'll end up over here. Okay, let's take a look at those two functions in details, and then next clip over, we'll take a look at some examples, a class of examples. Let's take a look at our even function. A even function has a whole bunch of definitions, which I really don't think it's necessary to be memorized because memorizing doesn't really help you to figure things out. A even function says, look, if you have an x0 over here, okay, function of the x0 is over here, f of x0 is over here. A even function is saying, if you mirror this one over here to minus x0, go up to the function, you end up at exactly the same. Kind of like the twins almost. Okay, so twin one is here and twin one, twin two is over there. They have exactly the same value. For example, if y is equal to x squared, which is the easiest one we can think of, 
and let's put this one as a function of x, then f of x equal to f of negative f x because, let's take a look, f of x, whatever I give, I'm going to square it, which is x. f of minus x, whatever I give again, I'm going to square it because that's what a function, this function, this particular function does, square everything you gave me, equal to x squared which happened to equal to f of x. So therefore, we prove that for this particular function, f of negative x equal to f of x. Thus, we call it an even function. It's an even-tempered function. Okay. By contrast, let's take a look at the odd function. Okay, here's my odd function. If I take x0 over here, this is my f of x0. It's a positive. Now the twin, it's over here, minus x0, I'm backing over here. And you know what? It turned out to be a minus f of x0. So not only x is mirrored, the value for y, their corresponding value, is also mirrored. So both, when, both of them are e, um, when both of them are mirrored, we call this function odd function. So let's take a look. y is equal to cubic root of x. So for this one, f of x says, whatever you give me, I'm going to cube root. So you give me x, I'll cube root it. If you give me f of minus x, whatever you give me, I'm going to cube root it. And that becomes that. And then this one is equal to minus cube root of x. Cube root is equal to f of x. So therefore, f of minus x here, we proved is equal to minus of fx. Okay, we call this function odd. All right, hope this helped you. Hi, this is Dr. Pan, host of Tucson Math Doc channel on YouTube. As always, I love to hear about math questions. Till next time, have a confident day.